What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Jeff Benjamin. Today we are talking about what's new in iOS 9.3. Let's have a look. Secured Notes. So in iOS 9.3, you can now secure notes located in the Stock Notes app. And I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. Just open up the Notes app here, and then we'll just open up a note that we've created. So I have this, my passwords note, which has all my passwords there. Don't try to steal them, please. And then I just tap the Share button, and then you'll see where it says Lock Note in the Share Sheet. So I can tap Lock Note, and now I'll get this little pop-up here that allows me to put in a password and put in a password hint, and I can even turn on the switch to use Touch ID. So I'm gonna put my password in here, and now just tap the Done button, and now the lock has been added, but I still haven't locked the note itself. If I wanna lock the note, just tap the Lock button in the upper right-hand corner, and that locks the note. Then I just tap View Note, and then use my password or either Touch ID to unlock the note just like that. All right, so now that I have my password established, I can go in and lock any other note that I wish to lock. So I just go into the note, tap the Share Sheet, and then tap Lock Note, just like that and I don't have to put the password in again because I already set it. Now one of the really cool things is that you can lock all notes in the list just by tapping the lock button at the bottom of the notes app. You see it there, so I've locked that note, and then I can just of course tap view note and then unlock it. Obviously I need to use the right finger for touch ID. Uh, I can also use a password if I wish as well. So let's go into the settings here and let's talk about the settings for the notes app. Of course there is a new password section within the notes app settings which is under the root of the settings app. So just go into notes here and then tap password. And now we'll see the settings for the notes app password. So I can change it, reset it, or turn off touch ID. Notes app sorting. So now you can actually sort notes found in the notes app by going to the sort notes by section of the notes settings. So I can sort by title and you'll notice here that the notes are now sorted by title. You can change that on the fly. You can also save notes app media to photos by going to settings for the notes app and then enabling the save media to photo switch. And this makes it so that anytime you attach a photo to a note, then that photo will be saved to the camera roll. So I'm going to just tap the little camera button here on this note and then tap take photo or video. And now I'm just gonna take a photo. All right, and then just use that photo. And now when I go into the Photos app, I'm gonna see this photo within the Photos app because I enable the option to save Notes Media to the Photos app, just like that. iCloud for iBooks. Honestly, this is one of my favorite features in iOS 9.3. This allows you to sync PDFs using iCloud. Previously, you could not, so if you had a PDF on one device, it wouldn't be on the other device, and it would just be kind of annoying. Now you can easily sync PDFs using iBooks with iCloud. So I'm going to go into the iCloud settings here and show you exactly where you can find the switch to turn this on. So go into iCloud Drive and now you'll see the iBook switch. So you just wanna make sure that that is switched on and that will allow you to sync PDFs using iBooks. There's also a revamped iBooks purchase tab within the app, which is really nice to have. So I'm gonna go into the purchase tab here on iBooks and you can see the revamped look of it here. Uh, but that's not all, it's not just pretty looks, but now you have the audiobook section so you can easily get back your audiobooks that you previously purchased. You can do this in older versions of iOS, but it's not as easy. And as you can see with 9.3, it actually breaks down your purchases within different genres. And that's really nice. It doesn't just dump them all out and just expect you to be able to find what you're looking for. Now it actually helps you a little bit by sorting things by genre, which is really nice to have. So 9.3 is a big upgrade for iBooks. Night Shift. This is without a doubt the headlining feature for iOS 9.3. When you swipe up Control Center, you're gonna see a new toggle there for Night Shift. And what Night Shift does is it adjusts the color temperature of your screen to reduce the amount of blue light emitting from the screen. And this isn't a new concept. It's been done before with apps like Flux uh, on the Mac and actually on iOS as well. But this is a feature that is built into iOS now that allows you to adjust the color temperature immediately. So you can just tap the little toggle there to turn it right on, or you can set it up to adjust over the course of a day if you wish to do that. So you can go into the settings, which is under the settings app, 
under display and brightness and then you'll see night shift there you just tap on that and then you'll see the option to schedule the night shift to come on and go off between a set period of time and you can also adjust the color temperature manually so you can make it less warm for more blue light or more warm for that orange tint and i will say although it might look a little weird that this does work especially if you like to use your phone in dark settings you're going to notice that this is going to help your eyes a lot so the point is it might look a little weird but at least give it a shot it's worth it new 3d touch quick actions so if you have a 3d touch capable device like the iphone 6s you're going to notice some new 3d touch quick actions for instance the app store now has a purchase shortcut and an update all shortcut for your convenience and there's also a new shortcut for the itunes store but remember you actually have to launch the app if you haven't launched it before sometimes you have to launch it prior to being able to take advantage of the shortcut so now you see the new purchase and a new view downloads shortcut for the itunes store so while those two apps got some new additions to their already existing quick actions some apps like the settings app got quick actions for the first time so here i can just quickly access the battery section of the settings app thanks to these new quick actions but that's not all there's the calculator app which allows you to copy the last result there's the health app which lets you see your medical id and show the dashboard directly from quick actions there's the stocks app which lets you search directly from quick actions there's the compass app which lets you start the compass or start the level and there's the weather app which allows you to access weather locations directly from your home screen haptic feedback app switcher now this isn't something i can really show you but i can tell you though so when you invoke the app switcher using 3d touch you actually now get a little peek and a pop when you open and when you fully open the app switcher peek and pop in music and app store Yes, 3D touch devices like the iPhone 6S get more love in iOS 9.3. You can now peek and pop in the App Store for easy perusal of apps. And you can do the same thing in the Music app. So if I go to the Music app here, I can peek and then I can pop like that. Exporting still photos from live photos. I'm going to take a picture here. All right, so I snapped this live photo and you can see it's a live photo because if I 3D touch on it, you can see it move around. But what if I want to extract the full resolution original photo from that live photo, yet still keep my live photo? Well, now I can just tap the share sheet and then tap the duplicate option. And now you'll see a duplicate is still photo option. So I just tap that and that will allow me to extract a still photo in full resolution from the live photo and still keep the live photo untouched. So now basically I have two copies and this one is the still photo that is at full resolution. App shortcuts in the wallet app. In iOS 9.3, you'll see shortcuts to related applications in the bottom left-hand corner of the cards in your wallet app, and tapping the shortcut opens the related application. News app for you, editors, picks, and trends. So the news app got a lot of updates for iOS 9.3, and some of that is editorial related, and some of it is just pure feature related. So we're gonna talk about some of the editorial parts of the 9.3 update. Now you have editors picks. So when you tap on an editors pick, you're gonna see a full list of different articles that are curated by Apple's news department. So these are specifically picked out articles and stories that they think are important. Now I mentioned that there are functionality changes as well. So if you swipe on a story you're going to see this little sheet here on the side you can like save or share and then if you swipe right you can dislike mute or report now you can also use a full swipe like that to quickly share and you can also use a full swipe to the right to quickly dislike you're also going to notice just overall faster performance you're going to notice trending stories so you can access things that are currently popular not necessarily curated by apple but you'll notice trending popular stories grouped in their own section news app landscape mode for iphone yes the iphone now gets landscape mode for the news app so you'll notice here i'm going to place my phone into landscape mode and you can see the layout automatically adjust to accommodate for landscape mode and the wider angle of view and i can put it back and it automatically adjusts back to portrait mode news app inline video playback this is one of the coolest features for the news app and that you can actually play videos in line, which means they don't take up the entire screen. They just play in their little box and you can continue reading the story like you were at first without being interrupted by a full screen video, yet the video still plays, you can still hear it and you can read along with it. That is pretty awesome. New Siri Languages. If you speak Finnish, Hebrew or Malay, you're really gonna love this 9.3 update because Siri's preferences now contain new language options for those three languages. So there's Malay, and you'll also find Finnish, 
which is right here. And then you also have Hebrew right here. New privacy setting for the music app. In iOS 9.3, it will be possible for apps, once they're updated, to add music to your Apple Music library. Now this is all depending on whether or not you subscribe to Apple Music. If you don't, then this obviously doesn't apply. But if you're an Apple Music subscriber, say for instance Shazam was updated, you would in theory be able to tap a button after identifying a song to add that song directly to your Apple Music library directly from Shazam if you're an Apple Music subscriber. And if you are, this new privacy setting allows developers to add music to your Apple Music library. Move and exercise data in the Health app. You can now access Apple Watch data from the Health app. So now we can just go to Health Data and then go to Fitness and Activity and there is our activity, our move, exercise, and stand data from our Apple Watch. That's really cool. And you can view it by week as it is here, but you can also view your daily goals. You can see your rings right there from the Health app. By tapping on Day, you can view it by week, month, in year, you can also show it on the dashboard and move, of course, your activity up to the very top so you can see that when you first launch into the Health app, but it doesn't stop there. You can also view third-party apps in the Health app. So if you tap on a specific type of activity here, so I'm gonna select Fitness and Steps, if I scroll down, I'm gonna be able to see the apps for tracking steps. So if certain types of fitness data have related apps, for instance, steps, I can find those apps directly from the health app. I can tap on the app and then I can go out to the app store and download that app or open the app if I already have it installed on my device. Activity app workout tab. Now the activity app for the iPhone now includes a new workout tab at the bottom of the display. You'll see it there, just tap it, and this will display all of your workouts from your Apple Watch. So you can view all the data related to a specific workout right from the convenience of your iPhone. Pair more than one Apple Watch. If you're running watchOS 2.2 on your Apple Watch and you're running iOS 9.3, you'll now be able to pair multiple Apple Watches. So you can see my Apple Watch here, my 38 millimeter stainless steel, but I can still pair another Apple Watch using the pair a new Apple Watch button. So let's give it a try, shall we? All right, so I have two Apple Watches here and I'm just going to try to get this working. It's kind of hard to do it with the camera and all, but there you go, see? Your Apple Watch is paired. So there is my second Apple Watch, thanks to iOS 9.3 and watchOS 2.2. Verizon Wi-Fi Call-In. Starting with iOS 9.3, you can now enable Wi-Fi Call-In for Verizon. Now I have T-Mobile here, obviously, but I just wanna show you the basics of this. So all you need to do is go into the settings app, go to phone, select Wi-Fi Call-In, and then enable Wi-Fi Call-In on this phone, just like that. And now in the upper left-hand corner in your status bar, you'll see your new Wi-Fi Call-In indicator full screen video and podcast and music. If you're on your iPad and you're watching a video within the podcast app or within the music app, you can now use this new full screen option to view videos in full screen. New CarPlay features. Now you have the new and for you section of the music app within the CarPlay interface, and you also have a new nearby feature in the Maps app for finding points of interest. Major education features. The new education features found within iOS 9.3 are arguably the biggest features to make this update because it could have far reaching consequences to the way we use iPads in the future. For instance, there's the ability to share iPads among students. There's a new classroom app for teachers so they can manage student progress. A lot of these features are earmarked for education right now, but in the future, they could make their way to everyone on iOS. Folks, that has been a look at a lot of new features in iOS 9.3. I hope you were able to enjoy this feature walkthrough. And if you find any other new features, please let me know down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.